Hey everyone, Blaze here, welcome back to another Disco Tape Blu-ray anime haul video. Um, this time I'm theming it on 90, the 1990s, so I picked up all the anime uh, <laughs> that I've recently picked up from Disco Tech on Blu-ray that came out originally in the 90s. I'm going to do it in chronological order. I don't, uh, the only thing I haven't got here is the Lupin stuff, because uh, that will be in its own video. And maybe something else that's suddenly come to mind, but it's not that important. So anyway, I've got enough things here. I've got six things. Uh, two standard definition Blu-rays. Three proper Blu-rays, although one of them is an upscale. And then one thing I've picked up that uh, is basically um, a replacement for something I already had. We'll get into why I picked it up at the end, because it's not that big a deal. But yeah. Anyway, so chronological order means that we're going to start off with uh, a series that Discotech picked up from Aishi Productions. A-I-S-H-I? Aishi? Aishi? I don't know. <laughs> um, but basically, they've picked up a bunch of shows from this company recently. And I'm kind of hoping they'll continue that because there's some other stuff that I'd like them to get. Well, I say recently, it's actually been they've been picking up a bunch of stuff on this company for a while. Um, that you know they picked up uh, like uh, Blue Sea, Dan Cougar, um, Cybuster. <laughs> the other ones that are much bigger than that aren't coming to mind right now. But whatever, one of the ones they picked up and I picked up as well um, is. Engi Knight, La Mune, and Faulty. I have no idea if you're meant to pronounce Engi Nun. I don't know. I just call it La Mune and Faulty. This is the first release. There's also a second release that has all the OVAs and I think a movie, maybe. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's all OVAs. I don't think this got an actual television sequel. I think it's just extended, like, 12 or 13 episode OVAs. But I might be wrong. Whatever. I haven't got that yet. I've only got this one, which just contains the original, what is it, 38 episodes in standard definition. Japanese and English subtitles. So, yeah. This came out in 1990. It's basically a show that would fit in perfectly in the current um, <laughs> landscape of modern anime being obsessed with characters falling into video games basically video game type worlds and stuff uh, you know things like Log Horizon, Sword Art Online etc etc there are plenty of others as well because that's basically what this is we've got this character here who I don't remember his name uh, Baba Lamune so I guess that's his name Baba weird anyway he's like obsessed with video games and uh, some girl I've maybe this one here, I'm not sure, ends up, while he's playing one of his games, um, he beats all the ones he plays and all that, she ends up like dragging him into his television and into a world and he basically is told that, hey, you are the hero, we need you to save our world, um, take down this great evil, it's your destiny, blah blah blah. <laughs> Typical RPG stuff, if you will. And uh, yeah, so that's basically the story, or the very basics of it. And um, he has these little knights things, like little robots that he uses um, to fight. Um, I don't know, it's got this weird little cute monster thing here, who I believe um, he like feeds coins, almost like an arcade machine or something, and it spits out like these knights and he uses those to fight. Anyway, how 90s does that artwork look? I absolutely both love <laughs> and hate 90s art style character designs like this. Um, the character designer who worked on this, I'm pretty sure is the same one that did Outlaw Star, but this is like quite a while before that, so but yeah, it fits right in in terms of like that 90s character design aesthetic, which yeah, I love a lot, but it can get kind of crazy sometimes. Um, mainly the reason why I'm thinking that like, I love and hate it is because I love it, I generally do, I just love this style for characters and all that, and the, I love these uh, the glasses that this girl's wearing, I love seeing that in anime and stuff, but um, <laughs> my hatred, if you will, not really, hate, hate is a strong word. But, um, my hat is very wonky. Um, <laughs> my dislike of these character designs comes from, basically, the second and third seasons, or was it OVA and second season of Saber Marinette J, um, which I really hate. That I mean, that was a very extreme version of these designs. Anyway, whatever. So, yeah, here's the packaging that uh, Discotech have done. So, yeah, this has got, like, uh, a bunch of uh, OVA episode sequels as well. Which I'm looking forward to getting. Obviously, I did have... There was a OVA, one of the OVAs, VS-9, 
Night Lemune and 40 or VS Lemune and 40 or something. Six episode OVA at Discotech did put out on DVD, which was previously put out by Media Blasters back in the day, I believe. Uh, that got dubbed. All six episodes were dubbed. Uh, I've ended up selling out DVD because it was included in the second, like, complete standard death Blu ray collection, which has all the other OVAs included as well. So I got rid of that and plan to eventually, obviously. Uh, pick up the second part basically of this, but yeah, I love this art design on the front, it looks so cool. And then it's uh, the same as the back of the slipcover, I can't remember if I showed it, but it's the same. And the spine, and yeah, the whole thing is on one disc, so all 38 episodes again. Some really, really cool, <laughs> some really crazy. I'm gonna take that out because it looks so cool. Some crazy artwork going on. I love that stuff. I really do. Um, I don't know what the quality of this uh, standard definition release is like in terms of you know what the uh, what the video materials they had to work with are like. Um, I would imagine, given it's a standard def release and not like a, even an upscale, I'm, I'm sure they're they're a bit uh, old or whatever, <laughs> yeah, old and tired, I don't know, but anyway, I'm glad to have this, this is a really cool uh, 90 series, I've got a bunch of, obviously, um, as I've mentioned multiple times already, a bunch of OVA sequels and stuff, so it's cool to have this kind of big franchise from the early 90s, completely available in English and available on Saturday Death Blu-ray from uh, Discotech, so yeah, that's really cool. So then we go forward one year uh, to a pretty... Um, <laughs> Pretty is a pretty good word for this, actually. Um, a pretty huge release from Discotech. Um, this is one, obviously, that uh, you need to get sooner rather than later. There's your hint. It's Dear Brother. <laughs> so, yeah, I picked up the complete collection of Dear Brother. Obviously, Discotech, uh, when they announced uh, they were uh, licenses, they said that it's on a short-term license, if you will, anywhere between, like, 18 and... 24 months, so yeah, we're already probably about a year, or oh, no, when did this come out? This come out, I can't remember, this this came out this year, right? It's got 2021 on the back. Did this come out this year? I can't remember. I'm going to go and check. So yeah, obviously this came out this year. <laughs> I don't know why I second guess myself on that, but yeah, it came out this year, in, at the end of June. So, um, 2021 was a long year. <laughs> for me anyway whatever so uh, yeah absolutely beautiful cover this beautiful artwork um uh, i can't remember her name is it on the back uh, original creator uh ryoko ikeda 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 ryoko ikeda um who is the original mangaka for rose of asai and Dear Brother and a couple of other ones. Very, very traditional shoujo art style. Absolutely gorgeous. And this cover might just be the best one the discotheque have ever done, in my opinion. I mean, I know the main the look on the main character's face <laughs> is a bit funny, a little bit, if you think about it. It's just kind of a weird pose to strike when everyone else is like, you know, doing their very classy looking poses if you will, can't really think of a better term, but anyway, so yeah, uh, Dear Brother, what is this series, so this is, I mean, it's actually quite um, convenient, I guess, I mentioned Ryoko Ikeda, um, because uh, obviously she created Rose of Asai, who directed Rose of Asai, that was Osama Dezuki, and he also directed this, so this is like another collaboration done, you know, almost uh, 12 years later, but uh, yeah, another collaboration between uh, a fantastic director and um, a fantastic mangaka. So yeah, this is some very melodramatic shoujo drama. Uh, kind of Dezuki is very good at that sort of style of stuff, especially the melodrama stuff. And obviously this is got comes from a very shoujo-like source material. Um, this is basically about a girl here who goes to a pretty prestigious... I hate that word. It's really hard to, for me to say. Uh, prestigious <laughs> girls' school, all-girls' school in Japan, and um, gets invited to join, like, the sorority? I can't remember how to... I'm going to go with that word. I can't remember how to say it properly. I'm sure... Sorority. Yeah, sorority. It's not like his first day at Seiren Academy, a, pr a prestigious all-girls' high school famous for its exclusive and elegant sorority. Only ten members will be accepted this year, and competition is fierce. Despite seeming fairly unremarkable on the surface, Nanako is selected as a member 
instantly making her a target for her jealous and angry classmates. But the bullying doesn't stop Nanako from forming friendships with the three most popular students and even falling in love. Uh, reuniting Lady Oscar author, as I said, uh, Rose of Sai, uh, Ryoko Ikeda, with legendary director Sama Dezuki, Dear Brother is an enduring melodrama that's getting rediscovered by a new generation of anime fans. Rediscover quickly, go out and buy this, obviously, as I've already mentioned, this is a limited release. <laughs> and this, assuming it doesn't get rescued or Discotech are able to extend the license, I've seen other re somewhat recent classic anime come out on Blu-ray and then disappear and seemingly not get in license again. The price goes through, through the roof. Like, Space Runaway Ideon, which I picked up for like normal price and then I remember it being on sale on Right Stuff in that crazy Made in Japan Black Friday sale for like $11. That is now cheapest you can get it on like eBay is like $300. So if you want this, go and buy it. This will go through the roof when it's out of print. So yeah, this is a very melodrama series, obviously, as it mentioned. It also mentioned bullying. There's a lot of like emotional type abuse in this. I think I even saw a warning on Anime Planet mentioning something along the lines of drug use and stuff. So it's got some heavy subject matter. Um, 30, how many episodes is it? Did it say? Uh, 39 episodes, so three cores. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to watching it. It's beautiful on Blu-ray. Uh, the Blu-ray's been out in Japan for a while. It looks stunning. And uh, yeah, so I'm really, really looking forward to watching this one eventually when I feel ready because I know this series is going to kind of put me through the ring. I, I suspect if I get invested, this show is going to, you know, beat me up emotionally at times, I suspect. So yeah, uh, dear brother, again, beautiful artwork on the front. Same as the slip cover on the back. And then we got beautiful disc art again. Obviously, this series has actually come out before. I didn't mention that. Um, this streamed on Anime Souls, and it was one of the free series, or in fact, it was only one of two that they put out on DVD through their crowdfunding uh, to completion. If I can find the covers for those, which I'm sure I can, I'll share them here. So yeah, it came out on free DVDs, um, very limited and uh, hard to find for a long, long time. But thankfully, we have. A Blu-ray which completely surpasses them and is in one nice compact release. Stunning pickup from Discotech. Absolutely something that all uh, classic anime fans and just anime um, nerds, if you will, need to add to their collection. One of the seminal series from the early 90s done by the master Asama Dezuki. So, well, directed. Obviously, not created. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, dear brother. Okay, so next up we have a absolute... Uh, another actually <laughs> absolute um, massive release from Discotech. Um, this is a Blu-ray that I was just hoping for the longest time that they would put out. It'd been out in Japan for a long, long time. This is a classic OVA from I think 1992 is when it started. If we're going chronologically, I'm pretty sure. And uh, yeah, this is a just a huge release to get, and I'm very, very pleased to have it. As I said, it's been out in Japan for a while. I was looking. For hopeful for the longest time disco to pick it up. This actually came out ages ago, okay? This is how long it's been since I've done consistent disco tech anime pickups. This came out ages ago, but I did pick it up, obviously. Uh Giant Robo The Day the Earth Stood Still, the seven episode uh OVA uh, classic basically. So this is a cr just this is a crazy OVA. So uh, this is based on a manga from the 60s by this, with a, the same name, Giant Robo. Um, it actually originally got adapted into a live-action like tokusatsu-type TV series that, with the same name, which got translated into English, or dubbed into English. Um, I think it's called like Johnny and the Soko Robot or something. I'll find a cover for it. I can't quite remember the name of it. I've never seen that. That uh, series, that tokusatsu series, also got... a uh, condensed or whatever into the Voyage to Space film which is also another famous um, adaptation of like a Japanese work if you will um, so yeah that Voyage to Space film is a condensed version or re-edited version of that TV series I believe like the dubbed version and yeah whatever anyway so it's got some history okay and then okay so early 90s come along and the director here Yasuhiro Imagawa who also uh, is like a prolific screenplay writer. He did do some, 
obviously some directed work, including this one, but he primarily does screenplay stuff. He did screenplay for like Berserk and stuff. And uh, yeah, anyway. So he basically grew up, I think, on not just the manga, but also like the um, Tokusatsu series. And was like a huge fan of it. So he was absolutely just dying to work on this. And as a result, this was like a passion project. And it really, really shows. And this came out. Not necessarily in the heyday of OVAs, if you will. In fact, this is almost interesting in many ways because, yeah, you know, the bu the bubble of like the Japanese economy kind of burst, obviously, in the late 80s. But um, so you might think like productions like Giant Robo were kind of like a thing of the past at that point. You know, the other ones you might come to mind are things like Megazone uh, 2 Free and the Bubblegum Crisis and things like that. In terms of like longer form OVAs. Obviously there's also Legend of Galactic Heroes but that went on for a long long time. Um, but anyway, so Giant Robo comes along <laughs> and it's a huge production but it did take a while to come out. I think it, uh, the production was like, does it say on the back? Uh, it doesn't seem to. It seemed to have, I think it lasted like between like 91, 92 all the way up to like 95, 96 sort of range. About five years I think it took um, to do the seven episodes. And each episode is about 50 minutes long, 45, 50 minutes. I think the last episode is an hour long. Last episode is amazing. But um, yeah, this is just an incredible uh, series. So what's it, what is it about? <laughs> um, um, it's basically a combination. So it's based on, obviously I said it's based on a manga. I don't know if the guy's name is on the back. Um, it doesn't seem to be. That's kind of frustrating. Uh it's got uh, Imagawa, but he's the director, the writer and the director, but um, give me a second, I'll go and look up his name. Okay, his name is Mitsuteru Yokoyama, um, I probably butchered that, I'll put it up here. <laughs> um, I'm kind of annoyed I didn't remember his name, he's the guy that created Tetsujin 28, <laughs> like basically the other, you know, debut ma uh, anime, if you will, it's that he did the manga, but obviously the anime, you know, Tetsujin 28 is, came out the same year as Astro Boy. They're both, in my mind, linked to being the birth of anime, if you will. So, anyway. And he worked on a bunch of other stuff like Barbell 2 and stuff. So, yeah, a uh, prolific manga uh, back in the day. And, um, so, yeah, the director of this, huge fan of his. And this this OVA is kind of like a collective uh, of, his, of the original manga, Yokoyama's works. So it's all different characters uh, from all of those original uh, stories that he created in the mangas. Um, yeah, all combined to tell this one great, basically, if you will, like Giant Robo Cinematic OVA Universe, if you will. Like, if that, that's like the easiest way to translate what I'm trying to convey here. So you take all these characters, combine them into this brand new story. Um, but with all the characters having their different backgrounds and stuff, and there's a lot of different mixtures to it. So you've got, you know, a 12-year-old kid with his giant robot. But you've also got, uh, I don't know if it's Gimre in particular, I don't think so. We've got, like, these characters, these two here. Uh, this guy, no. Uh, this guy and this woman here, who are basically, like, wuxia. I can't remember how to say that properly, but, you know, like, martial arts Hong Kong like action cinema, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, stuff like that. Um, like the heroes like that are all mixed into this great like sci-fi story, and it all has like this retro look to it, like retro futurism, like uh, Art Deco type design to everything as well. And it's this great massive sci-fi story where you've got this um, like evil organization called the Big Fire, who basically I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, I'll, I'll read it on the back, shall I? <laughs> Uh, in a marvellous future, Earth is in the midst of conquering its energy crisis thanks to the Shizuma Drive, a miracle invention from a troubled scientist. The dark forces conspire to tip the balance of power in their favour. The Big Fire organisation seeks to neutralise the Shizuma Drive in order to create a new energy crisis, and one of their key operatives has his own secret plans to take revenge and plunge the world into darkness. <laughs> Standing against Big Fire is the International Police Organization, um, the IPO. <laughs> uh, heroic and colorful assemblage? Assemblage? 
whatever, of mighty warriors, secret agents, and super scientists. The IPO's youngest member is a Daisaku Kusama, an earnest 12-year-old boy who commands the mightiest super robot in the world, Giant Robo. And, uh, yeah, so, watching this um, is really like watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, you don't, it doesn't necessarily give you, like, you don't get, like, a couple of episodes at all, like, origin stories based on each character, uh, like, you know, like the MCU was, and then get the Avengers. Um, it's not like that. Like, they're all pretty much know each other, or if, even if they don't, like, they meet each other pretty quickly. There's not, like, a huge origin, uh, you know, backstory to any of the characters as such. But they're all very varied and different, and they all come together to take down this greater evil. And... The animation is stunning throughout, and uh, yeah, it's just epic. The music is insane. It's like got this operatic type score. Um, it's an incredible production, and is definitely um, probably the best produced OVA ever, in my opinion. It's not my favorite. I gave this a nine, I believe, out of ten. Which is a pretty high score. <laughs> but yeah, it's not my actual favourite OVA, but in terms of like just pure production values, it's definitely the best one I've ever seen in that department. It's just in that sense, in terms of production, like it's perfect across the board. Like animation, absolutely incredible, music amazing, character designs is epic. Because <laughs> it's got this retro style to all the character designs to mimic obviously their um you know, their origins, where those characters actually come from, and they kept, you know, they modernised them as such, so it has that, like, Tezuka-type style, if you will, um, it's the easiest way, again, to translate it, even though, obviously, Tezuka wasn't alone back in the 60s making manga, plenty of people were in the 50s and whatnot, but, yeah, it's got that classic style, um, anyway, <laughs> I don't want to go about it too much longer, other than, if you haven't picked this up, I highly recommend you do so. This is another one that, if you consider yourself an anime fan, anime nerd, like <laughs> this is one you need to have. It's very uh, important to have this one on your shelf. And we've got it here on two discs. And these discs are absolutely crammed full of extras. I mean, the back here doesn't really um, convey just how many extras there are. Um, I actually didn't mention there are two dubs. Uh, there is an original manga UK dub, which is a bit of a trash fire, if I'm honest. It's not a terrible performance by any means, but they were making the dub as and when these episodes were coming out, which was year on year. So every year they would try and get these actors back in to, you know, continue the roles uh, for the next release. And a lot of the time they weren't able to get some actors back. So some of these characters are like voiced by about three different people across the seven episodes. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit of a trash fire in that sense. Uh, thankfully in the um, mid 2000s, uh, Media Blasters licensed the OVA, did a really cool box set for it, which I, I do own. I should probably show that right now in a minute. I'll go and get it in a minute. But um, yeah, uh, Media Blasters did their own uh, <laughs> their own dub and uh, that has a consistent cast across the seven episodes um, I recommend the Media Blasters dub if you're going to watch one the Japanese is obviously good as well <laughs> so yeah it's on two discs um, it also comes with um, some art cards or postcard things I guess we'll just show them all so got that which is on the inside cover this one it's got Game Ray on it um, this one just really really cool this one, I think this, so yeah, see that giant freaking eye thing? It's from like the final episode, it's fucking amazing. Seriously, the animation in the final episode is absolutely jaw-dropping. <laughs> like it really is, and I was on the edge of my seat. Honestly, parts of me do wonder why I didn't give it a 10. <laughs> in retrospect. Anyway, um, I'm going to go and get that other release, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I had to drag this down from like the top shelf <laughs> in my other room, my bedroom, because uh, I don't have shelf space in here for it at the moment. I do plan to solve that eventually, although I've been saying that for a long, long time. Anyway, it's pretty dusty. <laughs> but this was like the premium eye edition that um, Media Blasters did back in the day on DVD. It's one of my more unique anime sets that I'm happy to own. I'm glad I didn't sell. There was one point I was actually literally was selling this and no one bought it. I'm so glad they didn't. <laughs> I'm so glad I still own this. But yeah, <laughs> got this crazy thing. Like the giant robo eye. So yeah, it's a DVD set. 
and the um, top comes off and then basically you would buy the volumes in DVD covers and then inside the DVDs they had a jewel case CD inserts that you could put into a CD case and then put it into this set so yeah so it's basically exactly the same as like the DVD covers and stuff but um, in a jewel case which is weird <laughs> so yeah is this on two discs this one yeah so two discs kind of cool I've got them all including the um, harder to find uh, Unfortunately, the Gimray one didn't get the full treatment. It only had this single insert. But yeah, Gimray special. Is it just one? Yeah, just one disc. And uh, that lines that puts us up nicely, if you will, into Gimray, the uh, complete OVA series. So this is a free episode follow-up to Giant Robo, starring the. Um, <laughs> The fan favourite, uh, Ginray in her Chinese dress here. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is three episodes. Unfortunately, this is upscaled to Blu-ray. They didn't remaster this OVA in Japan like they did for the original. So yeah, the original looks incredible on Blu-ray. This is upscaled in-house by Discotech. I picked it up because I wasn't too keen on the idea they've upscaled it, but it has... Um, just put the case back in for the giant robo. It has uh, a bunch of extras on it, which are really nice. And um, the <laughs> the DVD release for Game Ray that I might put on the shelf next to Giant Robo on Blu-ray, which I didn't need to do, obviously, because I also have it in the case for the DVDs or whatever. But anyway, if I were to do that, the DVD case for Game Ray is like bright pink, and the discotheque release on Blu-ray here matches up perfectly. Obviously, the Brady Hartel did a really nice job getting the Game Ray logos and all that to match up and look like it's meant to be but unfortunately as I said um, uh, Gimray is upscaled <laughs> on Blu-ray so yeah that's uh, that's unfortunate um, it I don't think it looks that great in truth it's not like a deal breaker or anything but like the first episode there like when the Gimray is waking up in bed and she's got like the sun coming through her like blinds those I can't remember what they're called are they called like Venetian blinds though type you know the one no I don't think they are but the ones that have got like bars like that all the way down rather than just a single sheet or whatever so yeah blinds like that whatever <laughs> I'm coming through and um, yeah she wakes up and she's just got like this halo right round her entire carrot like her entire body that isn't part of the art design that's just like a video artifact I don't like saying that word I've mentioned that before because artifacting is <laughs> something completely different in video quality uh, jargon. But anyway, whatever. So it's got that. So things like that, and it can look just a little blurry and weird, all blown up. It doesn't look that great. Like the original masters they used are good, but they're not like amazing. So <laughs> yeah, this is like worth it for the extras. And but if you don't have the DVD, I would kind. And if the if you can find the DVD cheap, I would have that as like a something to go with this if you will because I feel like the video quality might disappoint you on this depends how picky you are I guess it's not terrible just I would probably watch the DVD <laughs> so anyway so yeah so yeah there's three episodes the first two episodes of this are basically like just side story like comedy stuff I think I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I've seen it and then the final episode which is what this cover uh, mimics or is from whatever um, yeah it takes place in this like uh, desert uh, and this is a follow up to Giant Robo the OVA this takes place after the events of the OVA um, I, I can't really remember anything substantial from this but it, from what I understand it is definitely it's kind of the only canon sequel out there so uh, yeah Gimray the complete OVA series and on the back, so yeah, it's got a ton of extras that aren't included on the um, original like Media Blasters release. We've got staff and cast interviews, uh, Love Fight music video, Gim Ray remix music video, scoring Gim Ray, which is like a behind the scenes uh, documentary, if you will, of uh, yeah the the scoring of Gim Ray, and that's like forty minutes long or something, or even longer. So yeah. Uh, art gallery, trailers, and commercials collection. So, yeah. And this was directed by someone else as well. So, written and directed by Takeshi Mori, who uh, 
Also did Gun Gunsmith Cats, a Takano video, and Luna Eternal Blue, which is isn't Luna Eternal Blue a video game? Is there an anime for that as well? I can't remember. Whatever. I know there's that RPG series like Luna the Silver Star Star Story or something. Anyway, whatever. Um, so yeah, comes on one disc, and we have a bunch of these postcards again. I'm pretty sure, if memory serves, I got like duplicates of these, which I'm not sure I was meant to get. So, Kim Ray in a Chinese dress, Japanese schoolgirl uniform. Was that a Chinese dress? I don't know my fashion, if I'm honest. <laughs> a bikini. Uh, yeah, I got the last two, the last one twice. Not sure if that was deliberate or not, but whatever. I might have someone's precious <laughs> Gimray postcard that I wasn't meant to get. It just came in the set, obviously. So, uh, yeah, so Gimray, Giant Robo, the complete uh, uh, series on Blu ray, although obviously Gimray is upscaled. But yeah, highly recommend the original, and um, I recommend giving Gimray a try. And if you're not too bothered about video quality, like you have to be really, really picky to be bothered about this, to be honest. But uh, assuming you're not really, really picky, um, I recommend picking up both of these Blu-rays. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to burn through the next two. Um, so, or the last two, actually. So we got a standard definition Blu-ray release. I think this is, I can't remember if it's 96 or... No, 1997. I definitely know it's 1997. Because, although the original OVA predates it, I think, 95, 96. But anyway, whatever, uh, this is Battle Athletes <laughs> TV series and OVA collection. Um, six, ep six episode OVA, uh, which I've seen long long back in the day. I saw that when I used to own the DVDs um, across three volumes. I think Genium put them out and then dubbed. And then they did the TV series, 26 episodes across eight volumes, which I did have once upon a time. I never got around to watching them. The reason I definitely remember this coming out in 1997 is because um, one of the pet little projects I like to do occasionally when I'm thinking about, oh, let's get a bunch of certain types of anime watched or something, is I just pick a random year and just watch a bunch of stuff from that year. You know, stuff I'll probably never get around to unless I force myself into this, like, cage, if you will, of just like, I'm going to force myself to just stay here for a bit. Stay in this room called 1997, and all I'm going to watch is anime from 1997. I didn't watch the TV series for Battle Athletes and not from 1997, but I knew it was one of them because it was one of the options I had available to me. So yeah, I've still not seen the TV series. When I do, I'll probably rewatch the OVA. Although the OVA, and then watch the TV series, but the OVA is actually just well, the OVA is, is itself, and then the TV series is also itself. If you were, they're not one's not a sequel to the other. Um, the TV series is just a much longer, more expanded version, um, more true to the source material. I don't know if this is based on the manga or not. can't remember. Um, not too sure what the video quality is like on this. I know that Mike Tool was like bigging it up and Justin Savakers was bigging it up when they announced this. Um, it has uh, complicated masters to work from. Um, that's why it's definitely standard definition on Blu-ray. Obviously it was cell painted but there's no Blu-ray in Japan. Um, the original Pioneer DVDs looked kind of bad, so this should be a significant improvement. I've heard some people, uh, well, I remember reading on a couple of forum posts that people were like, maybe not too impressed with it, but it comes with from like a difficult source material, and it is a standard definition Blu-ray. It's not meant to look amazing, amazing. <laughs> but anyway, it's just convenient to have it all in one single package. A 1997 anime, pretty much the biggest I can think of from that year that I've still not seen so yeah I should get to this eventually obviously this did get a sequel relatively recently an actual sequel um, that Funimation have dubbed and um, have they dubbed it? I think they did I'm pretty sure they did and uh, that's coming out in the not too distant future I imagine on Blu-ray as well um, obviously modern animation on that one and everything so that would that look good in HD um, Although I, I seem to recall that people weren't too hot on the sequel. I think it's called Battle Athletes Restart or something. Even though it is actually a sequel. It's not a retelling or remake. As far as I'm aware anyway. Anyway, whatever. Um, we're concentrating on this one. Really cool character designs once again. And again, I really like this cover as well actually. I think I might prefer it to... Yes, I, I know it hasn't got the three main characters on it. So I get why it's not the main cover. But I just I really like the background on this one. Anyway, so yeah, bad athletes.
the complete collection. I think it's all on one disc, yeah. So the complete thing on the single disc. So yeah, uh, Battle of Athletes. Happy to have that one. It's basically, <laughs> I haven't explained what it's about. It's basically like athletics in space. <laughs> and they're kind of like idols and it's all like televised and stuff. Um, welcome to the year 4998, where the most important sporting event for humanity has become the athletic competition for the Cosmo Beauty title. So yeah, it's basically a mix of like sports, athletics, and beauty contests, if you will, all set in like a future sci-fi setting. And yeah, bad athletes. <laughs> Okay, and finally, hopefully I won't spend too long on this, because even though it's a really cool, sorry, uh, a really cool uh, thing, I picked it up a long, long time ago. So, a long, long time ago, I picked up Car Captor Sakura, the movie, on Blu-ray, and a while ago now as well, I picked up Car Captor Sakura, the movie 2, on Blu-ray, the sealed card. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between these two? You'll notice that the first one didn't come with a slipcover. That was how it originally uh, was put out. It never got a slipcover, but the second one uh, came out many, many years later when Discotech were doing slipcovers, so it got a slipcover. Um, and a while ago, about a year ago, I noticed that Discotech had actually, on the current print runs of the first movie, it does come with a slipcover, and I wasn't gonna but I decided I would because I figured I can sell this on eBay get most of my money back and it would be nice to have them match so yeah I, I repurchased Car Captor Sakura the movie the first one so I can have it with the slipcover there's really not a huge difference yeah it still has like the same cover underneath although there is different printing I'm pretty sure yeah the first edition I have to remember which one I'm not holding now. <laughs> the original release was called the 15th Anniversary Edition, which obviously, by the time this one was reprinted or whatever, um, it's no longer the 15th Anniversary, so this one is just called Collector's Edition, I believe. Yeah, Collector's Edition. Car Captor Sakura, the movie. Other than that, I don't believe there's a... Sh oh yeah, there is another difference. Just remembered. <laughs> so yeah, the new release also has inside artwork which the original does not. Other than that, the disc art is practically identical. I don't believe there's a huge difference. Yeah, probably. The, uh, I mean, that might be just a different printing or something, but the, the pinks are a lot darker on the new release. As, a, as opposed to the old one, they're much paler. Other than that, they're identical, the discs. So yeah, uh, that's my 90s discotheque uh, Blu-ray haul. Uh, my voice is already dying. I talked about Giant Robo for a while, <laughs> and everything else, actually. So yeah, um, I'm Blaze. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely go out and pick up Giant Robo and Dear Brother, especially Dear Brother. Reminder on that one, Dear Brother obviously will not be around forever. Um, like. Like I said, Justin Justin Savakis originally said that this has like an 18 month license period or something like that, although or under two years or something, I can't remember, but it's not gonna be around for long. So if you haven't picked this one up yet, I highly recommend putting this one pretty much number one on your list for 2022. So yeah, if you want it, go out and buy it sooner rather than later. So yeah, dear brother, go and get it. I'm Ivan Blaze, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.